Hey YouTube, welcome to another video. In this episode, I will be continuing what we started with the new gen land revision that I published last October. I have been running it for a month now in my homeland and had not encountered any issue. So it's time for me to bring it to the next step. So for this episode, I will be implementing that next step and share with you the latest design. So as you can see, this is the design that we have implemented in the last redesign way back in October. And I have been running this for a month. Everything seems to be okay. I haven't seen any errors on my switches or on my gateway. Nothing is showing up on any alert. So I'm happy that I haven't seen anything go wrong with this particular setup. Because I, like I said in the video, a lot of those things are experimental. The next step for me for this design is to improve this area. Because as you can see here, getting pretty populated and it's not really built to have that much of host to be connected to this switch. An alternative for me is to have more switches distributed but I feel like this one will bring back my old issue about traffic from one VLAN to another. That's why I'm moving in this particular design. This is the long term. I still cannot implement this because of the lack of devices for the immediate shorter plan. I'm having this particular design in order for me to meet my long-term plan. So as you can see here, there's some multiple uplinks in here. So I updated this diagram to show that it has multiple uplinks. So now we can get on with the configuration. Okay, so this is the current lab equipment that I have here for the demonstration. So I have here an ER605 version 1 OG. I have an SG3428 which is the distribution switch and I have an EAP225 which is these are all the other devices that I have when we implemented the uh, revision of this network last month. Um, for this video the purpose is to have a distribution switch connected to an access switch this one. So this one is an SG2210MP and this one is an EAP235 wall just to demonstrate that I can still manage these devices which is connected to the access switch so the connection will be from the gateway to this distribution switch to the access switch and then to the host devices and to this access point so let me adapt it first adapt. there you go it's connected so let me just rename it right now to reflect that it's an access switch. So SG2210MP-AS. So AS means access switch. It's at the edge. And there you go. And let me just zoom in to the devices so that I can explain to you the setup before I adapt the access point. So this is the ER605. As you can see here, I have multiple uplinks here going to the distribution switch, which is the SG3428. You can see here. So I have multiple uplinks from port 1, port 3, port 5, and port 7. So port 9 is connected to the SG2210MP so that we can at least start adapting it. This particular uplink, this POL uplink, is connected to the EAP. 235 which we are going to adapt now let's go back to the screen and let me do a refresh here as you can see i have here in port one this is the uplink for the access switch and if i go to the distribution switch you can see here this is the uplink to the gateway these are all the other uplinks to the gateway as well all of them goes to the gateway this one is just vlan one and all the rest will be their only respective vlan memberships and this one is the uplink to the switch itself. Okay, so let's go to the port here. Let's just get a quick check on this port. You can see here, port 9. I'm using the new profile, all new. I'm not using the old profile as I have discussed in the previous video. And then now we have to do the same thing for the access switch. So if I click here, so this one is port 1 for the uplink. All I have to do is select this one and select all new and click apply so now it's configured properly the way we wanted it to be configured we don't use this all 
except for this one we still have to change this one this is the port where in this device is connected okay, so let me change that one as well now that we can manage that this should not have any impact with the adoption of this access point as you can see here i'm going to adapt it now so still adapting Provisioning. So there you go. ER605 gateway connected to the distribution switch, connected to the access switch, and then connected to the access point. So let me rename that. Let's call it access access point. I guess. Apply. And there you go. So I have shown you that you can easily adapt these additional devices by making one as a distribution switch and you can still adapt additional devices such as this one that are connected to the access switches. Now we're going to add more uplinks from the distribution switch to the access switch. So the way we're going to do that is through LACP or through link aggregation. In the past videos, I've shown you how to do link aggregation via static configuration using a D-Link switch, the one that you can see at the top of the mini videos. But this time around, we're going to do link aggregation using the active passive or LACP mode that is available in Omada. So since we have both Omada switches, it's much simpler to configure and make sure that everything is compatible. The very first thing that you need to do or not do is connect cables between the switches other than the main uplink. So when you're creating a new link aggregation, in my experience, just configure all the ports for link aggregation or LACP and then later on connect those cables one by one and check for connectivity. But for the case of Pomada, one thing that I found best to configure link aggregation is to start with the end device, so from the outside in. In this particular scenario, the outer edge device will be the access switch. So that's what we're going to configure first. I'm going to configure port 1, port 2, port 3, and port 4 for link aggregation. That will give me 4 gigabit uplink from distribution switch down to the access switch. So let me just configure port 4 first. Okay, so if the profile override is not checked, you need to make sure it's checked so that the options shows up. And in here, click aggregating. So don't configure the main uplink for the time being, just configure all the rest of the other ports. So three and then two, and then select the lag ID, select one. In the previous video, I have shown that I selected static lag because my other switch only supports static lag, which is it's just on. But for this particular switch, we're going to use passive, the other one is active. And then it's four, three, two, and click apply. As you can see here, it's two, three, four, it's all LAG. And then now I'm going back to the distribution switch. I want to configure 11, 13, and 15, because these are all the top ports of the distribution switch. This one is the current uplink to that switch. So I would like to configure these three, 11, 13, and 15, as the equivalent lag port of the access switch. So let's go to port. Let me go to port 15. So that's good. Select aggregate in here, 15, 13, and 11. Then select the lag ID, lag one. And then again, this time around, select active. Okay, the other one is passive and this one is active. So I'm selecting all new as the profile for this flag, which is a good reminder for me to make sure that the other one has the same profile. So you can see here, lag one, all new. So let me just go to the other switch, go to ports, go to lag, and make sure that it's the same all new. Oh, it's using all, so now I can use all new. Click apply. Okay, so now we have to uplink the cable. So let me just first we remove this uplink to avoid any loop might show up as a heartbeat mist, but let's hope not. So, and there it is. Let's go for a bit. Okay. 
so you can do it one by one but I'm just doing it all at the same time just to shorten the video but if you would like to be to play it safe you can do it one by one and check the happening so now I have ports 2, 3, 4 is connected so let's check first the distribution switch how it's showing up here it looks like it's connected and now let's look at the access switch and you can see all of them have that power that up arrow that means all three of them are all active uplinks nothing is blocking meaning you have three gigabit uplinks in here from the distribution switch to the access switch so now we need to add the one so that it completes the cycle so let me just edit the existing lag port here and you can see here there's also an uplink there and now i'm going to add the port one okay it's still passive Apply. and in the other one in the, the distribution switch let me do that for the port 9 and that, and edit that one and now I'm going to include port 9 and click apply so all I have to do now is uplink this one to port 9 there you go then there you see that we have a successful uplink from one switch to another using 4 gigabit uplink and all four of them are showing up as active uplink. So we can test it by doing I guess ping T. Ping T there you go you can see there okay, and let's see let's see this and open up my other port. Let's check my IP. I should be in admin IP VLAN. You can see I am in 101.104. And uh, let's see. So if you're looking at the mini video, I'm removing my cable here from the distribution switch. There you go. And I will get disconnected. And I'll just connect anywhere here. I guess this one's the closest one. see here that it's working and let's simulate a break in the connectivity so let me break port number one first there you go still working let's make second connectivity okay still working let's break the third connectivity Okay, looks like that was uh, one of the active uplinks. There you go, but it quickly recovers. And then, of course, if I break all of this, well, then there will be no more uplinks. So let's bring up port connectivity one again. Make sure I don't mix them up. So let's bring it up. There you go, you can see it has come back alive. There you go, and I'm putting it back again. Putting it back again. And then putting it back again. Okay, I guess I think that's pretty much it. I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something from this video. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you don't like this video, please give it a dislike. But do let me know what I can improve upon so that I can further enhance my videos in the future. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope you subscribe. I hope you like. And I hope you hit that notification bell so that you will always be notified whenever I post a new video up in YouTube. Thank you for watching my videos. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you and bye bye.